Gable Drill is a worldwide company. Uh, we're just one of the many locations. Um, and so historically, this has been one store and the rental uh, for the bottom hole assemblies, which is our, you know, the primary pillar of our business model uh, and the machine shop was all rolled into one. And then we decided that uh, we wanted to separate the two and try and introduce some uh, outside revenue as well as get a clear um, kind of uh, easier for us to track the, the costs involved with designing, manufacturing and repairing uh, the tools that we own and rent to our customers. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that's when we started um, Store 25, it's called Houston r and uh, which which I head up. Um, and then with with that, we also introduced stub welding, which is unique to um, definitely unique to our company, and it, it, it's it's pretty unique to the industry uh, altogether. To say that uh, the these two wilers have been integral to that effort, um, in so much that our our effort to stub weld uh, wouldn't be as successful as it is with, without the capabilities of the wilder. So I, I see those those tied at the hip, essentially. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we didn't have a wilder when we first started. We, we had we've got a couple of Mazak Powermasters, and they're good machines, but they just didn't have the deep bore capability that we were really looking for. We were having to send tools off to uh, third parties, um, and that was eating up revenue and eating up time, right? And uh, in this industry, at least the way things are going right now, time is absolutely everything. What year or how long ago did that sort of evolution take place? You know, we got along for a year or two without the Weiler and and you know, we were having success, right? It's so much success that you know we were able to invest in some better machinery. But you know, from from the get go, it was it was pretty obvious that we were handcuffing ourselves. Um, by not having optimal machinery. Explain to me stub welding and what it is that's unique in the process. Sure. So, um, you know, these bottom hole assemblies, um, they're, they're, they're non-mag tools anywhere from five inch to 10 inch OD. And the ID is an inch or two. So we're talking three, four, five inch wall thickness mm. on these tubes, essentially. And you know, the connections get recut and they, the tools get shorter and shorter over time. And eventually they become too short to where you can't insert the tooling that you need, the measurement devices that you need to into the bore of these tools and send them down hole. Your only option is to scrap them and get new ones made or send them to me and I'll chop them and weld new material on to bring them back to their original print length. Mm. So, you know, go, going back to these two, these, these machines being tied together, right? Uh, our, our, our success has increased, um, I would say significantly since the introduction of just the first Weiler here, um, as far as our capability and the machining time. We've cut down on the machine time significantly. The Weiler can take big bites out of the OD uh, and it can take big bites a long way in, in the ID. So, you know, I guess it, it, so the material we weld on is both bigger on the OD and smaller on the ID. So there's a lot of material to remove to match the concentricity of the existing tool. Yeah. And right? uh, they, what, what materials are you most often cutting? These are all stainless steels. Um, a 110 and 140 KSI austenetic stainless steels. Um, uh, additionally, uh, we're the only facility in the, the entire Western hemisphere that's qualified to stub weld Inconel, both heat treated and non heat treated Inconel. Um, so, sort of rewinding back to how you first came upon Weiler, I mean, was it something that you knew was out there? You just you had to go to your higher ups and make the case, or were you just were you in search of something that was alternative to some other product line you were using? Well, you know, I had I had heard that Weilers existed and that they were fairly uh, common in the oil field, um, but I you know I wasn't very familiar with why exactly. As an oil field company that's been around since the '80s, we have a fair number of 
old manual lays, Lehman's, World War II era, era Lehman's, that are phenomenal machines. Um, you know, we refurbished them some number of years ago and you know they hold a taper perfectly. They're, they're great machines. Uh, and, and to that point, we have a lot of manual machinists, very accomplished, very, very good manual machinists. Uh, it was easier for the machinist, I would say, to bring them from a manual to a Weiler than it was from a manual to like a, a Mazak with Maza Troll or or something like that because the the controls you know on a on a Mazak I mean that's you're learning a whole new language at that point yeah uh, it's it's very difficult uh, to go from this to there uh, in any sort of kind of acceptable time frame to train somebody it might take six months but that's six months I got to pay somebody to not make any production work right right um, but you know, from going from a manual to a Weiler, it, it dropped down to a month. Have you seen, how have you seen your customer, um, I guess, feedback or just sort of, how are you seeing the, have you seen any sort of response from your customers as you made this evolution to Weiler in terms of quality, longevity, things like that? So I would say probably the, the largest selling point to our customers because our, our customers are, are drillers, man. They're not yep. machines, right? So, you know, when I tell them I've got two Weilers in here, that doesn't mean anything sure. to them. But when they come here and visit the shop and they see what we've invested to making sure that not only are we exceeding uh, tolerance specifications, uh, you know, the, the, the effort, the money, you know, that's kind of sideways, but the mm -hmm. effort really, um to do this quickly and accurately uh and to, to progress what we already offer uh i think is kind of the biggest selling point to them i would imagine as a result also just production time has improved as you move to wyla correct and you know the size of the machine the, the through bore the 14 and a quarter we've got stabilizers that are 12 13 14 inches i don't have to steady rest those anymore Mm -hmm. And taking the time, it probably takes an hour for a decent machinist to set up a tool in a steady rest, right? I don't have to do that anymore, uh, which which saves an inordinate amount of time. Often, being specific to Weiler, it's it's the the robustness of the Weiler to take those big bites uh, accurately every time, right? So if I've got a machine a new pin, I can take a lot of material off to get that cylinder diameter on size yeah and i don't have to take as many passes to do it support for methods has been absolutely outstanding i've never had so much support <laughs> from any vendor for anything much less a machine right um yeah. you know you guys had you had two two or three guys on site the whole time while this new machine was getting put in and you didn't have to right you guys could have just kicked that thing off able put it in whatever and then gone thanks out the door but you didn't so that was phenomenal you know that i i'd like to really drive that home is that you know there's there's always more that something can offer you and, and when you've got the robustness that a weiler offers you know you're, you're free to push those limits and find new things and figure out things that you didn't think it was possible to do <laughs>